Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShock.com and ElectronicLessons.com. Uh, yesterday I made a video showcasing our new bench tester that, that uh, features uh, a square wave signal generator from 1 Hz to 500 Hz, um, an LM317 variable power supply um, with a relative output and a display displaying what the voltage is, regulated 5 volts out from our 7805, uh, uh, a momentary push button a latching push button, uh, a buzzer, and uh, there's a few other things as well. There's an on-off switch, and it comes with the kit does come with uh, a 12 volt AC adapter, so you can plug right in, plug and play, turn it on, and you're ready to go. So this can be used to test all of your circuits. Uh, I really, really had a lot of fun programming in the uh, debounced modes for the switches. When again, one being momentary, meaning you push the button, the output goes high until you let go. Debounced, and then the latching one, meaning every time you press it, the output toggles. So on, off, on, off, and so on. And you can um, adjust the signal generator output based in four different steps. Now they were talked about in the demonstration video yesterday, so I'm going to be placing both videos in the listing because we're going to put one together from scratch so that you can follow along when you build yours should you should you potentially buy one. So let me show you what comes with the kit. So here are the components. You got your custom printed circuit board, a 2N2222 NPN transistor, two 10 k ohm potentiometers, 10 turn, uh, 780550 regulator, LM317 variable DC regulator, uh, step down regulator, four 0 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitors, a um, 10 nanofarad ceramic capacitor labeled 103, a 1 nanofarad capacitor labeled 102, um, program microcontroller with socket on the back, um, a screw for our heat sink, a 220 ohm resistor, two 1k ohm resistors, a 10k ohm resistor, 555 timer with socket on the back, um, Two, two pin terminal blocks, a DC jack, uh, a knob for our, potenti our uh, variable voltage to potentiometer, a poten uh, potentiometer that sits right here on the board for our LM317 adjust, uh, two pin four digit voltage display, a piezo buzzer, heat sink for our LM317, a one microfarad electrolytic capacitor, two uh, momentary push buttons, four uh, 100 microfarad electrolytic capacitors, a 7-pin header, a 3-pin header, a 2-pin header connector, a 4-pin, uh, a 4-switch dip switch, and a, an on-off switch. So first of all, let's do our resistors and our ceramic capacitors. The potentiometer is right here. Uh, we're going to do the other potentiometer later because it's bigger has a screw head, a gold screw head. On the footprints right here, labeled R, A, and R, B, uh, the screw head, as you can see, has a little indicator on the footprint. So from a bird's eye view, make sure that you place both of them with the screw head on the right from this perspective. Uh, there are three pins for each. The ceramic capacitors don't have a polarity. You can solder them either way uh, as long as you place the right values in the right places. Now, these Ceramic capacitors, or these big ones, they're bigger than the other two. Uh, they're labeled 104, and that is 0 0.1 microfarad. So, um, let me just show you where they go. They go in the C6 slot, the C8 slot, the C2 slot, and the C5 slot. And they're all labeled uh, 0.1U from micro. Now, the 10 nanofarad capacitor is labeled 103. And that goes in the C11 slot, labeled 10N for 10 nanofarads. Now, the smallest capacitor is labeled 102, and that's 1 nanofarad, and that goes in the C7 slot right here, labeled 1N for 1 nano. Now, uh, there's a hidden resistor down here, uh, 200 ohms, to, uh, and that's where you place your 200 or 220 ohm resistor. If it's 200 or 220, it doesn't matter. Um, you're, you have one 10k ohm resistor, and that goes in the R1 slot. Now you'll notice that R3 and R4 are also labeled 10k. No, those are actually supposed to be 1k. So you have two 1k ohm resistors, place them in the R3 and R4 slots. Or else, if, uh, if you get those mixed up, then your buttons might not work properly. So solder those into place, and next we will do our electrolytic capacitors and our momentary push buttons.
the buttons are very easy to do. They just pop into place. They only fit in one way. Line up the four holes uh, to the four leads and pop them in. They should be flush to the board when you solder them. Make sure they're flush to the board when you solder them. Um, there are two of them. Now there are four 100 microfarad electrolytic capacitors and one one microfarad electrolytic capacitor. The four 100 microfarad electrolytic capacitors go in the C3, C4, C1, and C10 slot. Now for each of these, there is a plus sign nearest to one hole. In the case of C3, it's the bottom. In the case of C4, it is the bottom from this perspective. In the case of C1, it's on the left. You can't see it from here likely because it's very small, but there's a little plus sign, and that's your, for your positive lead. In the case of C10, it's on the top. Now, as you'll notice, the electrolytic capacitors have a long lead and a short lead. The long lead is the positive lead, so make sure that you, p you place the positive lead in the holes with the, positive sim with the plus sign beside them. If you reverse it, and they might pop when you power the board, so be very careful. Now, the single 1 microfarad electrolytic capacitor goes in the C9 slot, and there is a plus sign on the top pin, just to the right of the top pin. So place your long lead in, in the top pin, top hole, and your short lead in the bottom hole. Make sure that they are close to being flush to the board. They don't have to be flush to the board, but maybe a millimeter or two millimeters off the board. That's up to you. So solder those into place. Next we will do our terminal blocks, our uh, on-off switch, and our dip switch. Slowly but surely it's starting to, to look like it's becoming a board. <laughs> <laughs> starting to take shape, huh? So, your dip switch, 8 pins, goes in the SW1 slot. Um, now you'll notice on the top of the dip switch, it's labeled on, and to the right of that says dip. Make sure that from, that, from this perspective, that this faces the top of the board. It should pop it right into place. Just solder it, make sure it's flush to the board, ensuring that the writing is on the top side. Once you have that soldered in, make sure all of the switches are low, except for switch 4. Have it switched into the on position, so I'll do that right now. Okay. You don't have to do that, but uh, I'll show you why a little bit later. The on-off switch. This is a tricky component to get mounted, but it's not really that hard. You just can't force it. Uh, on the on-off switch footprint, there's a little bump here, and there's a bump on one side of the switch, just a bump and uh, it might be hard to see from here but you want to make sure that from a bird's eye view that bump is facing the bump on the footprint which is on the right hand side now when you put it in there's five pins and you want to make sure that it's at 90 degrees and that you line up all the holes gently and once you have them all in place just simply push down and it shouldn't mount itself to the board make sure it's flush to the board when you solder it now the three holes in the middle are very close together so make sure that you have a fine tip soldering iron for this or else you might cause some shorting on there. Now if you cause shorting on there, it's really not a huge deal, it just means that as soon as you apply power, no matter what state the switch is in, it will apply power. So, um, that, you just have to, it just, it, that component is a little bit difficult, don't force it or you'll damage the switch. The two terminal blocks. The terminal blocks have a terminal side and a plastic side. They go into the, into these two slots right here. Um, the left one is ground and V out. So that's your variable V out from the LM317, which is represented by the voltage on the voltage display. And to the right, there's ground and re uh, regulated 5 volts out from your 7805, which we'll place in a few minutes. So make sure that the terminals are facing out and not in, because if you have, if you why, if you solder them in it'll, the wrong way, it'll be hard to desolder them and get them back out, and you'll never be able to wire in your connections because they'll be facing the capacitors. So solder those all into place, and next we will do both of our sockets, both of our ICs, piezo buzzer, and the 5mm power jack. The jack only fits in one way. Uh, as you can see, the jack portion should be facing out from the board, should pop right in. Uh, you don't have to apply a ton of solder to each of the three leads. The holes are fairly big. Just make sure that, that, uh, you, that all three leads are connected to the board via solder. You don't have to fill the holes. If you apply way too much heat here, you'll damage the jacks. So be very careful of that. Now, right here we've got our 555 timer socket labeled NE555. And here we've got our microcontroller slot labeled IC1. Now, for both of them, what you might notice is that there is a notch in the footprint for both of them on the left-hand side from this perspective. There is a notch on the left-hand side of the sockets. 
and there is a notch on the left hand side of both of the chips. So make sure that the, from a bird's eye view, that the notches, when you place the uh, sockets in, that the notches are facing left from this perspective. And once you've soldered those in and you've made sure that there are no shorts, place the 555 timer with the notch to the left in the socket here. And the microcontroller 10F, uh, uh, 10F222, pick 10F222, uh, with the notch facing left in the socket. Very, very important. If you turn that around, you will burn out those chips. So you've really got one shot, be very, very careful. The piezo buzzer, very easy. Has a long lead and a short lead. Probably difficult to see from here. The piezo buzzer footprint right here has a plus sign ab above the right pin. Make sure the long lead goes in the right, above, you know, in the hole next to the plus sign, and that the short lead goes in the left hole. Solder those into place, and next we will do our, um, we will do our LM317, our 7805, uh, and our 2N2222 transistor. Easy step, let's do the transistor first. Transistor goes in the T1 slot, right here. There's a curved side of the footprint and there's a flat side of the footprint. The 2N2222 has a flat side and a curved side. The flat side has writing on it, the curved side does not. From a bird's eye view, make sure that you, pl you place the component with the flat side facing the flat side of the footprint, or rather the 555 timer, and that the curved side is facing the back of the board to the curved side of the, um, of the footprint. Now, the 7805 and this LM317 look very similar. On the front, they are labeled differently, 7805 and LM317. The LM317 will go there, but we're not going to go do the, to that one yet. There's a little bit more to that one. Um, what you want to do is your 555 or your 7805 right here has the front side and the back side. The back side is white more or less, whitish gray, and that's ground. And in the footprint, you might be have a little bit difficult time seeing this, but the back of the footprint right here of the 7805 is white. So you want to have the front, the black side, uh, facing the front of the board like so. Um, place it down as flush as you can. Don't force it. It's all into place. Make sure there are no shorts. If there are shorts, you plug it in. You're going to damage your power supply. You're going to, and you might potentially damage the board. But you're more likely to damage your power supply than the board. Anyway, the the LM317. What we have to do is we have to heat sink it. And in order to heat sink it, we actually have to make this a double step. What you want to do is you want to take your LM317, place it on the heat sink, and loosely tighten the screw. Into, fasten the screw into the heat sink. Don't tighten it. Just make just make it uh, about half halfway in. We want to be we want to make it so that the LM317 jiggles around. Now the reason for that is the heat sink has two holes in it, one on the right and one on the left. In the LM317 it has three holes. The LM317 uh, the front should be facing outwards, obviously, and uh, the two holes on each side will fit into this hole and this hole. But you have to make sure that they are all in properly before you tight before you tight tighten this so place it in you might it might take you a little bit of time to to get them all flush to the board once you do that tighten the lead or as tight as you can tighten the uh, the screw as tight as you can so that the LM317 is fastened right to the board then turn it around and solder the five leads to the bottom of the board the three on LM317 pins sorry and the two pins of the heat sink and when you're done it should look like that so have a go at it. This and one more step, and we're ready to do a quick test. Your 7-pin jumper, you don't have to apply it. You can if you want. Uh, you can solder directly to the output holes. And I'll talk about the output holes in a minute, because uh, they all have a different function. But you can solder the short leads facing the bottom, so you have long leads sticking up. Or you can, if you want to test something specific, you can solder wires to it. However you want to do it, it's up to you. The 3-pin header and the 2-pin header connector go in the... Uh, little three pin header slot right here now it might be hard to see from this perspective it might be very hard to see it's right below the piezo buzzer uh... and the three pin header is labeled uh... on com off now once we have that in place if we have the two pin header connector shorting the com and on pins the five 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 timer will be enabled if you want to save a little bit of power not much power but a little bit of power you can take that header off and place uh... it in short com and off and that will disable the 555 timer until you remove it. There's also another way to uh, disable the 555 timer, and that is 
via one of these ports right here, but I'll talk about that in a few minutes. Uh, the uh, three pin potentiometer goes right here. Make sure that it's at 90 degrees when you solder into place and be careful because if you j if you jog it it can get damaged. Uh, next we will do the uh, knob and the voltage display. Sorry about the lighting. Uh, I know it's a bit dark. Um, the knob. Okay, before we get to the knob, uh, you'll notice that I have the knob pointed at around 7 o'clock with the notch at this angle. What you want to do is you want to take your potentiometer turn all the way left. And then you want to place the knob on at around 7 o'clock so that it turns at roughly 7 to 5. 7 to 5. And that's voltage low, that's voltage high. Now, the display. You'll need a glue gun here. What you, you'll see is there's a notch on each, each side, and there are dots on the bottom on the bottom and the wires are on the lower right hand side you want to place it in and put a little bit of glue on the right notch and on the left notch on the board so that it's secured down but before you do that cut the wires and strip off about a couple of millimeters of insulation right about here so that the wires aren't anywhere near as long and what you want to do is after you've stripped off the insulation is there's two holes right here labeled GND for ground and that will be connected to your black wire and pause for positive which will be connected to your red wire so once you have that connected once you power it on as long as the voltage on the LM317 exceeds 4 volts DC uh, by turning it say to the right the LM317 voltage will be displayed on the uh, display and I'll show you that in just a minute because I'm going to solder this up and glue it on myself now, you don't have to use the included adapter. This is a 12 volt 1 amp adapter. Uh, it plugs right into the board. And so, uh, what you can do is you can remove your piezo buzzer. And now we'll do a quick test. First, we'll test the, uh, the LM317. Now, remember, we've got our device, our output turned all the way to the left. So the display will be off. It only recognizes at 4 volts. The output will still represent what's there, 1.2 volts, roughly 1.25 volts right here. But the display will only read once there's about 4 volts on it. So hopefully you can see that. I'll actually turn out the light for this. There we go. So I'll turn the light back on. And uh, so we know that the LM317 is working. Uh, to test the 7805 output, all you need to do is just put your, set your multimeter to uh, voltage, to DC voltage, and put both lead, put one lead, your red lead, positive lead on the 5 volt out pin, and your black lead on the ground pin, and it should read uh, 5 volts, give or take a few percent. On off switch, on off switch works. Um, now as for the a 555 timer. I uh, will need an oscilloscope or an LED. You would probably use an LED. You can change the frequency in the duty cycle by tinkering with RA and RB. Uh, you just need a fine uh, flathead screwdriver. Uh, if you watch the video with the demonstration, it really goes through a full test uh, because I actually have LEDs hooked up to the outputs uh, for S1 and S2. But when I press S1, the output should go high until I let go. S2, toggle on, toggle off toggle on, toggle off. And again, now I'll quickly talk about the outputs, but if you really want to do a thorough test, watch the other video because it's much more thorough. This was mainly an assembly video. Uh, we can test our buzzer, however. Uh, that should not be too difficult. We'll do that in just a second. The pins are labeled 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and they're labeled I.O. ports. Buzzer in is 1, so if I apply a 5 volt signal to pin 1, the buzzer, buzzer will actually be quite loud. Uh, it's got a transistor driver so it's not being uh, the power coming from whatever you're, you're, you're applying from pin 1 is not driving the uh, piezo directly. It's, it's applying uh, a signal to the base of the transistor to drive the uh, piezo buzzer. So pin 2 is labeled 555 sig out for signal out. Uh, pin 3 is 555 reset. If you pull that line low to zero volts, it disable via say your Arduino. It will disable the 555 timer. Uh, four is uh, your momentary debounced button S1 out. Uh, so basically, 
pin four will be on, off, on, off. Again, and watch the video if you want to see it again. Uh, pin five is S2 out, so toggle on, toggle off, toggle on, toggle off. Uh, pin six is ground, so you can interface with your another circuit, and pin seven is a regulated five volts, so you can easily interface this with your circuit for test. So this is the bench tester. Uh, again, full demonstration offered on the other video. This was an assembly video, but I wanted to show you just how fun and easy it was to put it together. So thanks for watching and have a great day, everyone.